Right, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica. Today I am doing my February wrap up. You guys, I read a total of eight books this month. I can't believe it, especially since February is such a short month, but I just flew through a bunch of them. So the first thing that I read was a required reading is Beowulf. I don't have the book to show you because it's in my Norton anthology, but I wanted to like let you guys know that I read it. Um, I do count it. It is a full work that's considered like a novel type book or it's an epic poem, but you know, it's like it's long enough. I really enjoyed it. I was very surprised. Um, obviously I had the translated version. If you like Lord of the Rings and J.R.R. Tolkien, that would be a different type of story. That would be a story to look into because you get a lot of the same themes and stuff like that. It's very much a hero's journey type of um, type of story and it has the magical elements that J.R.R. Tolkien definitely plays with. In fact, learning about it in class, which is really fun, uh, we learned that J.R.R. Tolkien kind of brought Beowulf out of like just being an archaic type of story that we had and actually started to really study that story and he wrote like a bunch of essays about it and I'm really like I really want to go ahead and read some of those essays because that sounds super interesting. But yeah, I really liked it. I like J.R.R. Tolkien. I like Lord of the Rings. Those are like some of my favorite series and um yeah, so I really liked Beowulf. Okay, the next novel that I read, it was through audiobook. I read Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I didn't like this one that much. Personally, first of all, the audiobook was definitely a hindrance to me with this. The narrator was not that great, in my opinion. Um, there were just some voices and tones that he did, and I, I was using like my headphones a lot with it, so he would talk really quietly and then talk really loud and it was just like it was too much to be listening to like that and so I didn't it was just not good also in relation to the story I thought we would get more of Oliver Twist like the orphans um, point of view oh by the way <laughs> Oliver Twist is about a story about um, an orphan in London and yeah, it's very, it's Charles Dickens, I mean, we all know it, right? There's definitely a mystery to it, and it's definitely melodrama. Um, yeah, it was just okay, it wasn't my fave. I used audiobooks last year for one of my classes um, to help me get through Bleak House, Charles Dickens' Bleak House, which is a really, really dense, long, long book. And that actually really helped the audiobook. I loved it so, so much. This one was not that great, in my opinion. The next book that I read, and this was for myself, it is Hamilton the Revolution by Lynn manuel Miranda and Jeremy MacArthur. MacArthur, sorry, Jeremy MacArthur. And this was really, really, I, I just love this. It was really good. It's about the play, um, Hamilton and Lynn manuels like kind of like the backstory about it and inside they have like beautiful pictures of like the cast the original cast and they have like you know big textual um, text pages that tell us kind of um, behind the scenes of like while he's writing it and stuff like that and they even have like little this is maybe not the best scene <laughs> to open up to but they have like little side notes of like about the lyrics and everything and it's just like a beautiful beautiful book if you're a fan of Hamilton the play or a, for me it's the soundtrack because I actually haven't seen the play yet this is a great book to pick up if you really want to learn more about about the play and about the writing of it and the work that went into it um yeah it talks pretty much about like everything from the choreography to the um wardrobe designs to the writing and the historical accuracy and all of that it's really interesting and really well done and beautiful <laughs> okay i believe the next book i read I'm trying to remember I'm trying to go in order with what i read but the next book i read i think was a brave new world or just brave new world by aldous huxley this is a utopian novel it's about a future where where human beings have kind of have really it's really touching on like the assembly line type of um, I think it was written in the 1920s, 1930s, so it's very much taking on like the Ford aspect of, you know, the car and like the assembly line, and basically they've 
altered humans to put them in places of class and there's no movement in that class once you're born like I forget what they're called but basically if you're born at the bottom you stay at the bottom but you're cool with it like they're very much um, designed and psychologically trained to be stationary in their spot and it's very it was a very unique world I liked it there were some parts of it where I felt like it kind of went into like a Westworld type if you guys have seen that show on HBO but it ended up going like a completely different direction but there were definitely I could definitely see maybe the creators of Westworld getting some inspiration from this because one of the people in here that kind of goes off the limbs a little bit and he's like he ends up being a minor character but for a minute you think that he's going to be like a major character and his name's Bernard and if anyone knows the show one of the guys in there is named Mar Bernard so I don't know maybe I'm stretching but yeah it was um it was a good book I didn't love it but I did like it I think it was really interesting to um to pick up all right the next one I read and I don't read that fast. It's very hard for me to read one, um, read a full book in a day, but I, I definitely read this in 24 hours. I didn't actually read it in one day, if that makes sense. Like, I read, like, the first 25 pages, went to sleep, and then the next day I read it. But it was Moxie by Jennifer, I've heard this pronounced a couple different ways, but I think it's Matthew. I'm going to go with that because that's the easiest way for me to pronounce it, but um, Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. This book was great. This book is about a high schooler who is fed up with her, um, with living in a misogynistic type of atmosphere that her school has kind of created. Basically, she sees the different gender um, differences that the guys are held to a different standard than the girls, and she starts a zine within the school and it's she's definitely inspired by her mother's like 80s kind of 80s I think it's 90s feminist type of movement that her mother actually did when she was a kid it kind of takes off from there it's really a good novel and there are definitely some standards that I can relate to or I could relate to while I was in high school and here specifically they do talk about dress code and I will say my school was pretty fair on it, but there were times when, you know, there there were times, you know, when it kind of got a little shady. So yeah, I can relate to it. I think it's just a truthful novel, and, and it's really like one of a kind, and you come out of it feeling like, okay, yeah, like we can change things. And I think that's great for a YA, because I don't think that, you know, when you're in high school and younger, you don't have a lot of power or at least you don't feel like you have a lot of power, a lot of what you do is dictated by what, you're ha what you have to do, like what your obligations are, and it shows that you have power, you have a certain amount of power, and yeah, I really like this novel. Okay, the next novel I was highly, I was very surprised about, it is Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. Okay, for me, I am not super into war novels, at least like the ones that I read in the past, I usually come out of it saying like, okay, so I read that, and sometimes like for war novels for me, I think it's a lot of it is like shock value. This and like the main character, well, I'm thinking more like Hemingway type novels where it's kind of like, you know, rub dirt, rub some dirt in it and like go on and like that's life and whatever, you can't do anything about it. But this I don't know. This, I don't know if I'm even explaining that right, but this is completely different. This, the writer, is a character in the novel, but, um, so it's very meta, but he goes in and tells you that it's, nothing in here is real, but then some things are. But what I love so much about it is how poetic he is. I feel like it felt very real, even though, you know, the stories in here may not be real. It felt real and I really enjoyed it and a lot more than I thought I would. I kind of wasn't going, I just wasn't going into it, you know, with the Vietnam War. I wasn't thinking that I was going to love it, but I did. I really did. I thought it was really, really, really well done and really um, 
an enjoyable, easy, easy read. Like quick read, I should say, not easy. You know, there's definitely some subjects that aren't. Okay, the next book is, that I read was William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying. I liked this book. I think that I would have enjoyed it more if I had maybe a class about it, because there are elements in here that I think that I I enjoyed, but I didn't necessarily pick up on a lot of things, and I think I knew I didn't pick up on a lot of things. Um, and I think it would have been a lot more valuable if I did pick up <laughs> pick up on those things. Yeah, um, so As I Lay Dying is basically about a family who transport a family member across town, I think, or across the river or whatever, to bury her. And that's not a spoiler or anything, like you're thrown in the middle of this, and I think the art form of this is you're getting everyone's perspective. Each chapter is labeled someone else's name, and it's through their perspective of what's happening. For the most part, the story is linear, but it takes it takes a moment to get there because you do get everyone's perspective, everyone's um, set point of view. I found it a little confusing because there are so many, first of all, there are so many points of views that you get, but each chapter is not very long. Each chapter is, you maybe stick with a character for like two or three pages at a time, which kind of um, makes it a little, you don't really get to hold on to that character and hang, it, hang with it. There was one chapter in particular in here that I know, because I've, I know that this book is studied, if nothing else, not in whole, but definitely this one chapter. And I see like exactly what you would study. It would definitely be like the um, modernist theories and structural um, and post-structural theories as well. So yeah, it was just interesting. I didn't love it, but I appreciated it. <laughs> it's like the most politically correct answer ever. <laughs> okay. So the next one I read is The Martian by Andy Weir. This is about a man who basically, he's an astronaut and he gets stuck on Mars through, you know, ex extenuating circumstances and he has to live and try and survive until he can get res until he can get rescued. So I had seen this movie because it's been made into a movie starring Matt Damon. <laughs> um, I had seen this movie before I read the book so I kind of knew what was happening. That being said, the movie did a really, really good job with this book. I felt like it really um, stayed true to it. I don't think that it strayed from it much at all, if at all, um, except for it did trim the fat a little bit. And what I say by that, and maybe it's because I like knew the ending, but halfway through the novel, like the last hundred pages or so, I felt like it dragged a little bit. That's just me personally, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, un I'm not sure where my opinion lies because I do like that um, it wasn't a quick solve, it wasn't a quick fix or anything like that. You kind of, you got to, it was very realistic and I don't know how accurate it would be, but it was very realistic in the fact that there came up a ton of problems and each problem he had to fix and get on, stay on his toes and some of the problems didn't, or some of the solutions didn't work and you know it was very much like going through and trying to like basically survive on this planet that is trying to kill you and I'm pretty sure he said something like that similar into the book um, but because there's that constant you know solution and then problem and then solution to the problem you know there's that set that constant back and forth Towards the end, it definitely got a little repetitive. Yeah, I could have done without the last 100 pages, I would say. But yeah, I, but I mean, it was really good. I liked it a lot, but you know, like I said, it runs a little long in my opinion. All right, you guys, that's it for my wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you guys read in February. I am always, always so interested to hear what you guys have to read. I think it's really interesting and um, yeah, I just like discussing. And if you've read any of these, please let me know what your thoughts were because that's like the most exciting part is actually connecting to people about, um, about these types of things. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.